G'day Couch Critics, my name's Sog and I'm joined by my co-host co-host as usual, Bradley, and uh, today we've got a special guest on the pod. We've got a former A-Leagues player and current J2 player. Uh, he's represented Australia at youth level and uh, he's on our pod, it's Stefan Mork. Hey Stefan, how are you going? Hey guys, uh, pleasure to be here and looking forward to the chat. Absolutely, it's... um. The A-League season is just around the corner, which is pretty awesome. And Steph, yourself, uh, you've just started a podcast uh, because you want people chatting about the A-League. And so that's what we're going to be jumping in. Uh, Now, Steph, a little bit about your playing career. Uh, I I think most people will know a little bit about you, but tell us what's what's been the best club you've played at. You've played at a few, a couple at the A-League. Favourite club? (laughs) Um... Yeah, I, I have to say Adelaide United, my my hometown team. I think that's where I've had my my most success. I would say, uh, especially when I went back and we won the the championship. It's um yeah, it, it's something that's yeah. When you grow up supporting a team, playing for them is your dream. And and then when I went back the second time and captained the club as well. So yeah, I've I've enjoyed playing for every club. To be honest, I think you know probably. More so, you know, experience different parts of Australia um, and the world as well, being over in Holland and Japan. So um, I, I wouldn't say a bad word about any club, but Adelaide's the, the number one. Absolutely. Now, you just mentioned uh, playing in Japan. But just tell us, how do you pronounce the the first part of the club's name? Uh, so it's it's actually pretty simple, Fagiano. So it's an Italian bird. So a lot of the clubs here, because uh, football, you know, didn't didn't exist um, whatever it was 50, 60 years ago, or, or it did exist here, but it wasn't really a big sport. So they created the the J League. Actually, sorry, 30 years. I think it was the 30th year anniversary mm-hmm. last year or um, beginning of this year. So a lot of the teams took, uh, yeah, took influence from whether it was Europe or South America. So for, I don't know why, maybe the bird, the uh, Fagione was in Okayama and that's the reason why. But um, yeah, it's 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 relatively simple. It's It's got no Japanese actual link to it so yeah fantastic Fagiano uh, Okayama um, Okayama Okayama there you go uh, now playing in J2 uh, obviously is a, a different experience to Australia and, and people will be interested to know uh, kind of what the quality difference is like between playing with Adelaide United in the A-League and stepping into a J2 club yeah, I, it's always tough. You know, you always get these questions of um, comparing the leagues. And I, I think, you know, if you're saying what league is better, it's impossible to kind of say, but, you know, there's 22 teams in this league, uh, 42 games, obviously 21 away trips. It's, it's a tough league. Um, you know, we started at the, what was it, the middle middle to late February, and we've still got four games to go plus the playoffs. So, it's a it's a long season. It's it's a tough tough league, uh, like any second division around the world. I think it's more of a more of a physical and fighting league compared to you know your J one for example. Uh, I think it's a lot tougher to play well here. I, in saying that, you know you get players. I think Saito, who was at Newcastle Jets last year, he struggled in the second half of the year. He's come here. He's playing for Sendai in J two, and and he's obviously a, an ex Japanese national team player. So doesn't always translate and I guess the other part of it is it's you know the language the culture so um overall I would say Japan and J2 is a better league and a stronger league um but you know promotion and relegation changes the the dynamic of a lot of things so yeah it's it's great it's great to be over here and experiencing a a new new league and and hopefully I've got a couple more years over here at least to to come what was the transition like because you've been there for about a year and a half now like um, listening to your pod today, you know, you were quite young when you moved to Canberra, but moving to Japan, like that's a, that's a different language. It's a very different culture to Australia. What was the transition like when you first moved at the start of last year? Yeah, it was really, really tough, to be honest. I, I, I always wanted to get back overseas. I, I went to Holland first when I was, with my first overseas move when I was 20. And that, that situation didn't, didn't kind of pan out the way I wanted to. So I always wanted to challenge myself overseas and, once you get older, it's it's a lot more difficult to move to Europe or the opportunities to go to Europe are, are maybe there, but financially it's, you know, maybe it's not worth it, you know, because you can get paid okay money if you're a good player in the A-League. So Japan um, or Asia anyway is the, 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 next, the next place you go and Japan's the best league, um, I think, in Asia to come to. And 
it was difficult in the middle of COVID still here mm. when I first came. That's why it took me about three months to, to even get here. I signed the contract in end of November and um, ended up playing another five or six games for Adelaide after I um, was meant to be in Japan. So, you know, the language like you touched on was difficult. Um, the the culture of, you know, just going to the shops and trying to, you know, trying to, trying to get something um, from the supermarket. It's, you know, you, you think things in Australia or, you know, the rest of the world is going to be similar, but, you know, packaging is different. So you can't read it. Um, and sometimes the images aren't even the same. So you, you're trying to figure out, you know, what is, what it is you've picked up and is it, is it chicken or maybe it's not chicken or whatever it may be. So I think it took me a good two, three months to, to adapt. I had Mitch Duke here last year and, and he really, really helped with that transition. And, and this year I'm, I'm very comfortable. I think, you know, getting around Japan, I feel Japanese and last year in, in Okayama because the borders weren't open until maybe uh, late October, uh, early November in my city, you know, there was probably 10 or 20 foreign people that I would see, you know, in, in, in the whole 10 months. So it was, it was quite strange to be, you know, a, a white, a white person with blonde hair, you know, you stick out um, like a sore thumb over here and, um yeah it, it was interesting but um you know i'm feeling very comfortable now yeah that's fantastic what's what's it like being in a change room where the coaches and, and staff speak in japanese and what's the culture like amongst the players yeah i think it's um it's hard to interact with the players to be honest to really understand what what it's like but we've got a translator so we've got a couple of brazilians so we've got a portuguese translator it's a korean boy so we've got the korean translator and then the english um, translator as well so it's um it's interesting you know you're, you're looking at the front of the the room but you've got your translator directly behind you so you're kind of like got your eyes to the back trying to concentrate on what he's saying but then also pick up on the body language and you know the words that are coming out of the coach's mouth as well so you know things probably do get lost in translation a little bit and um it's hard to to get along outside of football with the Japanese players and saying that I'm going to dinner tonight with a, a Korean boy and a Japanese player. So we'll see how that conversation goes. Um, but, you know, you, you learn to communicate in different ways. And part of the Japanese culture is that they're extremely respectful and they don't answer back. They don't question things. If it's the coach, someone older, especially, it's kind of just like, well, what they say goes. And, and maybe they do, you know, talk a little bit behind the coaches back as, as all teams do, but not to the extent of what happens in, in Australia or Europe for that matter, where if things are an issue, you probably will say something here. It's very much like, you know what, keep your mouth shut. This guy's the coach is the manager. Um, and you respect that. As your Japanese fluent yet? No, no, not, not quite fluent. Um, I was doing lessons the the first half of this year and um then I got a little bit lazy I think you know as the the year progresses you get tired the the trainings are, are still hard the the games are coming thick and fast plus a couple of other businesses on the side that I'm doing um but if I come back next year to Japan then I'll, I'll definitely look to start those lessons again I, I think I can get by okay with um basic things but yeah it's it's difficult it's a very difficult language mm. yeah we might ask a bit about uh, the A League because obviously it's uh, going to start uh, very shortly. Or I don't I don't know when we're going to put this out. It might it might have already started, but it's been a lot of uh, interesting news in the past uh, couple of days for the A League. Obviously, the grand final deal has been reverted back to normal, and there's been the unite round. Um, what are what are your thoughts on it um, coming from Japan? What did you make of that news when it dropped uh, a couple of days ago? Yeah, well, I think you know the the fans wanted the grand final decision to be reversed. That was uh, a lot of the protest was, was around that. It was about, you know, the fans want to be heard. They're an important stakeholder in the game and, and they believe that they should have been consulted on the decision. And obviously they weren't. Mm. Um, what happened after that was, was extremely disappointing for Australian football. I think no matter what decision is ever made, you know, what happened can never happen again. And uh, a lot of that good work of the Socceroos, uh, and the you know the A League before that kind of went onto the break just disappeared overnight uh, with, with what happened in the derby. But it's it's overall it's a it's a great decision. I think it's the most logical decision, and it's awesome to be the first code to be having the men and and women both playing. Uh, I think as well, uh, it would be great to maybe have the youth teams and even state teams, you know, eventually coming as well, you know, so you can have an even bigger festival with um with more people from interstate coming and and more games on and during the school holidays, it's a lot easier to do that. So it's a great, great step in the right direction to get the fans. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, choking 
You need a bit of water. Over here? Um, no, I'm okay. Uh, but yeah, it's a great, great step in the right direction for mm. yeah for the fans to get that trust back. And that's the most important thing. So I think the APL needs to build that trust back up. They've done that by having the fans, um, the fan members as part of the each club so they get a voice. Now, words are, words are easy. They've made this really big decision, which is great for the fans. Let's see what the next kind of big decisions are um, to make sure the fans are always at the, the forefront of their, their decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you kind of mentioned before about promotion and relegation in Japan and how that just kind of changes things. Uh, our channel love a bit of pro-rel chat and a little bit of uh, expanding the A-Leagues chat. Do you think Japan's model uh, could work in Australia? Obviously, they, they have pretty high bar for how clubs can enter their system and they've got three divisions, but kind of all clubs are across that need to have a certain standard so that if promotion and relegation comes, they're ready to go. Do you think that could work potentially in Australia? Yeah, you've you've done your research. Um, I think it's the best way to go about it because you don't want teams to be promoted that, you know, they're not they're not ready to and they they're not going to add value to the league. And it incentivizes the owners um, and the fans of that club to to invest into the club to grow, whether it's stadiums, whether it's you know minimum attendance, whether it's training facilities, all of these benchmarks. So if you want to get promoted, you have to do X, Y, and Z. If you come first in the second division, when that eventually comes in, but you don't, you know, meet the criteria, well then you don't get promoted. And, and that's happened over here. I was speaking to the the translator about that and it was in the playoffs, one of the playoffs, and it was pretty much just, I think the team that finished sixth or fifth they didn't meet the criteria to go up. So the team that they were meant to play in the first playoff round, they just went through to the next round. So it's disappointing because um, they don't get a play after having a good season. But I guarantee you that club's probably thinking we, we need to invest now. So I think the A-League is a different, it's a different system in, in the current setup that, you know, these franchises have paid big money. They've lost a lot of money along the way. They, you know, they need a stake in the game to, you know, to want to still promote teams from within. If the game's going to grow and get bigger, and, and I think that's the way the A-League clubs have set it up now, that when you get a license, you get a stake in the league. So if it still stays like that, even if their team's maybe not in the league, uh, they, they essentially still own a percentage of the league. So um, I believe that's the way it's working. I could be wrong on that, so don't don't quote me on it. But that that's a way where, you know, all football people, hopefully want the game to grow and to be successful. And and the second division, uh, I, from what I've heard, is is hopefully getting announced in the next week or two, um, can show that these second division clubs can be sustainable. They can, uh, you know, f- work on full-time basis because it's it's not just paying player wages. It's the staff that comes with it. It's the 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 team around that, you know, it's the insurances. It's it's so much more than just playing the pay, playing uh, paying the players, sorry, a little bit extra and paying them full time. It, it's a massive organization um, that that goes from semi pro to professional. So I hope I hope those teams get up because there's a lot of a lot of excitement around that from everyone in Australia. If that proves to be successful, it's the most logical path to promote teams from the second division to the first division. And then you know if you've got the NPLs below the second division, um, if teams you know if they finish first and they want to come up to the second division because they think they're ready. And they qualify by meeting the minimum requirements. They they should come up, and second division teams should go down. Um, you know, I'm sure the second division needs to grow first, but to begin with, it's it's going to be you know a, a slow process to to get the you know the A League, the second division, the third division to the point that Japan's at. But they've done a lot in 30 years. So if we uh, if we put our heads together, I think in 30 years time, and and we have what Japan's got or close to it, everyone in Australia will be cheering. Yeah. I don't think we'll hold it, hold you up too much longer, Stefan. But I uh, wanted to ask uh, thoughts on the A League. Have you got a got a preseason tip on who do you think will be the winner, or a few teams that might be up there um, hoping to win the grand finals? Yeah, it's it's probably the most difficult uh, difficult year to predict. To mm-hmm. be honest, I th- I think there's a lot of a lot of teams that you don't know a lot about because there's a lot of new coaches in the league. It doesn't doesn't happen too often in the A League where. You've got Newcastle Jets with a new coach in Robbie Stanton. You've got um, Wellington with a new coach in it's Italiano or, or Chief, as as they call him. Um, you've got Stojovsky that's taken over halfway through the year at MacArthur, but this is really his first full year. Stadjic has taken over mm. at um, at Glory. Central Coast lost Montgomery, so they've now got a, a new coach in, in the last month or so. 
Um, it, it's tough to predict. I, I actually mm. don't know. I don't know who, who's going to win it. I think Sydney FC for me, probably just on their squad, their first 11 is really strong. If they can keep majority of those players out there, they've kept a lot of the same players from last year. Um, Joe Lolly for me is one of the best players in the league. I think they can they can be quite strong. Corrick has got them playing a lot more attacking and exciting football. Western Sydney's got a great squad. Uh, I'm not sure how well, you know, how well they're going to go. Did they improve on last year? Do they play similar? Melbourne City again, they've probably got the best squad in the league. Victory, uh, a good squad. I think they underperformed last year and Popovich has proven he's a good coach. So I know I'm just rattling off almost every team. Western United again, I think are quite solid. They've recruited mm. really well. Adelaide United, my my team, they're going to be playing a, a lot of young players. So I, I would, if I'm predicting and if I have to, um, if I had to put money on anyone, I would probably say still Sydney FC, Melbourne City, just based on um, their first 11s. Melbourne City got a bit more depth as well. In saying that, you know, come back to me in a, in a month's time and um, I'll probably give you a better reading just from watching the teams because every team's got quality. It's just, you know, a lot of the young players, do they play well? Are the coaches, you know, preseason's easy to do well in. There's no, there's no real pressure. Once the games start, you're going to see, um, you know, what they've done in preseason. Is it going to stick? And are they going to handle the pressure when that comes? But I think that's, uh, yeah, I know that's not probably answering too much for for the other ones. I think I'm going to go for Adam Taggart, top top goal scorer. I think he'll win the Golden Boot this year. He's if he if he keeps his body in in good nick um, and plays every game, I think he'll he'll have a massive season and and he's probably disappointed after not going to the World Cup and, and Perth Glory will be back up there again this year. So he's my tip for that. And and then the Johnny Warren, we did that on, on our podcast. But if I have to just tip one for that, I, I reckon Daniel Daniel Pena uh, is um, just from speaking to, to Ben Grucho, he, he's talked him up all, all pre-season really. And he's 25 years old coming off an ACL. He, he'll want to do well when he showed his class in the league last time. So I think uh, he's going to be a really exciting player to watch. So Let's see, yeah. Let's see how how that goes. Yeah, great. And and just finally, uh, on your own season, you you guys are just a couple of games out from the playoffs. Is your club the requirements? Do you think you yeah, guys we, can, we, can get it? Over you know, the there's line? four games to go. We're three points behind sixth position. There's probably about five or six teams fighting for that last spot. Four games, we've got four teams all below us, you know, a couple in the bottom three or four, and then the others are mid-table. But the one thing I've noticed in Japan, even last year, the same, you know, no no, no team is easy and no one kind of, you know, puts the handbrake up towards the end of the year. Uh, in other leagues around the world, maybe you play youth play, you play some young boys, or you just kind of, you cruise to the end of the season if you if you can't get promoted or, or relegated, but it's not the way it works here. So it's going to be tough for us. Uh, I hope we do make the playoffs because it's exciting. And you just never know. You just got to win a couple, two games, and, and you're in J one next year, and, and that opens up a a range of different options for myself, I'm sure, and, and the club. So, fingers crossed, we we can win four out of four and, and make the playoffs, and and then we, uh, yeah, we get up to J one, and and the whole yeah the whole city will will be behind us here in, in Okayama. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and I know we're we're really excited for the A League season. We know you are too. Bradley, did you want to say anything to finish off? No, I don't think I have anything uh, else to add. I just hope your prediction of City and Sydney FC in the final is completely wrong, as 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 I am a Wanderers <laughs> fan. So I would like to see those two probably fighting it out for the wooden spoon. But um, it hurts me to say that I'd probably tip Sydney FC as well. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, I have nothing yeah, else yeah. to add. No, I think Western Sydney, they've got to, again, they've recruited really well. They lost a lot of players. Hmm. Uh, it just depends how they settle in. Mark Rudin's obviously... Been there a couple of years now, uh, you know, Pirello Fires, um, if, if Anton, is it Antonson? Antonson, yeah. Yeah, Antonson, he's, he's looked good in preseason. They've got Hendricks in a, a Dutch mm. kind of uh, experienced player, someone that's, again, not a big name recruit, but you look at his CV, he's, he should be class. Again, you don't know, you don't always know with the foreigners, but I think West Sydney have got every every chance to to be up there in that top four again or they should be expecting that anyway and, and i hope for the league sake that they're doing well and i, and I hope you know combank can be rocking and back to you know 20 20 to thirty thousand every week because it's it's great for the league they've they've probably got the most uh most passionate fans i would say and um yeah like i said it's great for the league when they're they're firing for sure yeah i can't disagree with that
Well, <laughs> thanks for joining us, Steph. We uh, really appreciate it and uh, all the best uh, with uh, the next four odd games in uh, the in J-League too. Yeah. No worries. Thanks, guys. Uh, good luck with the, the podcast. Keep on going. It's It's great to see yeah, people spreading the word and trying to engage the community because we we need yeah we need football to keep growing and and stuff like this definitely helps. So good stuff. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks mate.